as Fredericksburg continues to expand, I think it's about time we build the iconic Nimitz Hotel. Today the building serves as the National Museum of the Pacific War, honoring Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz. But for the 112 years prior, it was a hotel. This will be my biggest mock to date with 3,350 pieces and definitely has some tricky architecture to represent. First we'll start with some standard tiling around the 1.5 base plate footprint, and lay out the exterior walls of the building along with some checkered black and white tiling for the washrooms. For the interior, I went with a white and light gray checkered pattern and left an area in the center for a fancier design in the lobby. There's a little green poking through, but overall, I'm happy with it. The right wall is comprised of tan masonry bricks and has a little light gray awning over the side door. The back wall is fairly simple and extends all the way to the back of the base plate, making this a corner building. Let's add a couple of pillars to support that awning, and then get started on the washrooms. These two washrooms will be shared by the guests on the first floor whose rooms don't have a private bathroom. Each one gets a sink, toilet, and a shower head. It might be inconvenient to share, but they have all the necessities. Next we can add the grand lobby staircase that goes up and over the rear washrooms. It's in white and sand blue and has a nice little handrail. Let's add the bathroom dividing wall with a couple of doors, along with a couple of room keys hanging on the front side. Now we can continue the staircase with this removable top section, but first I'll add some vegetation to help liven up the area. Looks like the start of a nice lobby. I'll add a little desk with a rotary phone and a gold bell in front of the wall with the keys. And this minifig looks like a perfect hotel manager. A dark blue sofa will go well in the front corner. However, the wall is pretty bare above it, so let's decorate it with some fancy artwork. I really like this Legofied version of Vermeer's Girl with the Pearl Earring, which came in the museum break-in set. Now that's a fancy lobby. Next we can get started on some of the rooms. Chester's grandfather Charles Nimitz, a German immigrant and former ship captain, bought the three-year-old hotel in 1855. This iconic hotel was frequented by frontier travelers and saw notable guests including US Presidents Grant and Hayes, General Lee, and the outlaw Johnny Ringo. The hotel also offered the only hot bath between San Antonio and El Paso. On the first floor I'll add three simple guest rooms. These will be the simplest and thus most affordable accommodations. The original floors were cypress, but I'll just use reddish brown to better contrast with the walls. The back wall has three sand blue window frames, one for each room. Next we'll add another staircase. These stairs are less fancy than in the lobby and arch up giving some more space in the room on the right. After adding some interior walls, we have a better sense of the three separate units. Obviously each one will need a bed, and I chose a dark red and dark tan color scheme down here. I'll also give each unit a different piece of additional furniture. The right one gets a simple desk and chair, the middle one gets a nightstand, and the larger room on the left gets a black armchair and a floor lamp. Three basic economy rooms that share the community baths under the stairs. I'll finish them off with some doors, and we have a nice hallway out front. I had a couple of clown minifigs, so let's say that there's a clown convention in town and give them each a room. Another side wall on the left, and the first floor is pretty much done except for the front wall. I'll use normal bricks on the front wall for a smooth stucco siding and include several more sand blue windows. The doors will be fancy brick built ones, so some bar hinges are necessary. But first, let's dress up another empty wall in the lobby that I almost forgot about. I think this print of a mounted Lego fish from the Pteranodon chase set is hilarious and will be perfect for the lobby. Here are some nice three panel doors I built. In real life, the doors are mostly sand blue with white accents, which is the opposite of these, but those important clip pieces don't come in sand blue, so I had to invert the colors. I think they still look pretty good though. We can extend the wall on the right and add the tiling on the top. The left side gets a nice covered porch in white and has some plants in front. I used these gate pieces as trellises and covered them with a pretty flowering plant. The second floor is going to overhang the front on the right side, so this beam will help keep it supported. Well, in real life at least. And here we have a couple of bushes like in the Parisian restaurant set. Moving over to the right side, we can add a couple of more supports, a trash can, and another flowering ivy climbing up the wall. Let's add an ivy on the bare back side as well. And with that, we have the first floor. The second floor on the left side will be styled the same as the bottom level with smooth tan bricks as stucco and sand blue window frames. There will be two nicer rooms up here, hence the two doors in the first wall that you encounter coming up the stairs. These rooms each get an ensuite bathroom that consists of a sink, toilet, and shower. It's a little cramped, but at least you don't have to share. This unit gets a comfy bed in dark blue, along with a dark brown nightstand, a blue armchair, 
and a little table with a reading lamp. Another side wall and we're on to the second room. This unit's bathroom is in the corner and uses an angled door. The sink doesn't quite fit, so it'll just go right outside. Let's add a little house plant, another comfy bed, and a nightstand. And the sidewall has the bathroom shower head in it. Definitely some nicer units here than on the first floor. We can attach the front wall and add a balcony. A light gray awning goes over each window, along with some white posts and railings. The center section is then capped with a white roof. These extra tiles on the side will help fill some small gaps created from the other second floor, which we'll see in a little bit. And then let's continue that vine from the first floor on the back side of this one too. The second floor goes right on top of the first. However, it is a little tedious to connect all the posts to the balcony, but I prefer this secure connection rather than them just all sticking up loosely. The roof is pretty much a flat one with the parapet wall going around the sides. However, there is a slope section in the center, so I'll add some white gable ends and some rows of slopes to fill the gaps underneath. The slope is tiled off and connected with some clips and bars to achieve that desired angle. In real life, the left section of the hotel is wider, but I squished it a little so that it'd scale better in Fredericksburg. Before we start the steamboat section, I saw this awkward gap between the second floor and the first floor that I didn't notice in the cat. To fix it, I added some slopes. It might look a little weird inside, but it looks much better than before when the second floor is on top of it. I also forgot to add some hotel guests. I have these two from the Hidden Side Ghost Train set and thought they'd go well upstairs. There's no train in town yet, but I guess there needs to be if the engineer and conductor are staying the night. In the 1870s, Charles expanded the Nimitz Hotel by constructing its iconic steamboat-shaped facade, which I imagine stood out quite a bit in a small German town in Texas. When the hotel was sold in 1926, the new owners unfortunately scuttled its nautical architecture. However, after becoming a museum in 64, the steamboat feature was rebuilt to its former glory. The floor's unique shape is going to require some creative solutions. First, I'll start with some hinged floor sections with two rows of mirrored wedge plates to get the front octagon shape. Then we'll build up the walls and place the floor section in last. The angled front part will need wall sections with slopes on the sides, which is the same technique I previously used on the big octagon community building. Bright light blue probably would be a closer match to real life, however, they don't make modified snot bricks in that color, and since they're crucial to this design, I chose to settle with the medium blue color. And this wall has some supports for the overhanging roof. Essentially, the octagon front of this floor ends up creating a width of 16 and a half studs in the back, which is pretty difficult to work with. So my solution to this issue is to connect the back walls on the inside with some tiles and then fill in the vertical gap with some tiles on the side. This will allow me to loosely place the 14 stud wide floor into the 14 and a half stud wide opening. This second floor will have two rooms that all divide with these interior walls. The first one gets a dark green bed, a tan nightstand, and a green armchair. These units will also have to share the community bathrooms downstairs. The other room gets a bed, a floor lamp, a desk with a reading lamp, and a chair. Next, I'll add the stairs that lead up to the top floor. The opening gets a railing, and I'll add a spiral staircase like the one in the bookshop modular set. Now the whole interior can slide down into the second floor. It does move around a little, but it's not going anywhere, and I think it turned out to be a pretty good solution. Next, let's finish the wraparound porch with more white railings and posts. These units might not get private bathrooms, but they do have some pretty awesome balconies. There's even a little divider to keep them separated. Let's go ahead and add this press lady in the front room who must be in town reporting on that clown convention. Next, I'll add another layer of those white plates to complete the covered balcony. The next level has a complicated roof. First, the back has a gable end with a tile for that half stud gap. And then to make it easier, I'm gonna add some interior walls to help hide where the roof attaches and to keep the third floor's interior cleaner. And those openings will get some dormer windows in a little bit. The front gets filled in, and the center section has a small ladder to access the top balcony. Each dormer gets three window frames, and it's important not to push down too hard or, well yeah. This mock has a total of 71 windows and 15 doors if you're wondering. The front has square windows, and later I'll replace the glass with some better looking white shutters. The angled roof sections are connected to hinge plates and are hinged over to the correct angle. The corners were more difficult to design as I was limited to the available wedge plate sizes, but alternating these two different sizes worked out pretty well, I think. 
this layer might be a little squatty compared to the real building, but that is kind of how it looks in older photos. So I'm not sure if it's just the viewing angle of the picture, or maybe the current steamboat was rebuilt to slightly different dimensions than the original. Either way, I'm fine with it. Next is the third floor with the penthouse suite. First, let's add some railings by the stairs. This unit has a really fancy bathroom with a gold trim toilet, a toilet paper holder, a sink, and a nice big soaking tub. Only a king size bed with some golden bed sheets is suitable for the top tier. We can flank that with some white nightstands and add a vase of flowers in the corner. There's also a table with a tea set and a couple of chairs. This lady seems fancy enough to lodge here and it looks like she's accompanied by her granddaughter. She's the rocking horse girl from series 24 but has the stick horse from the night in series 23. Sure looks like they're living it up on their vacation. And this whole unit slides right in just like the floor below it did. The top section of roof changes to a steeper angle and has dormers on either side. And the middle part gets a small covered balcony that the ladder inside led to. Above that is a lookout balcony that isn't really accessible to the guests. The rest of the roof comprises of stacked slope bricks which get a little steeper along the ridge line. This roof section also allows for extra headroom in the top unit. And this wall fills the gap between it and the front section. Because of the non-standard width the floor has, the roof has to sit loosely on top, and it requires this white top section to secure it to the building. But the steamboat's not complete without the American flag flying overhead. This section fits nicely on top thanks to all those awkward gaps we previously accounted for with tiles. And it looks like this lady walking down the street is just as impressed with this mock as you are. And there we have it, the Nimitz Hotel. Besides the Fur Eins Kirsch building, the Nimitz Hotel is probably the next most iconic building in Fredericksburg. And I think I built a pretty faithful representation of it. The actual building does extend a little more to the right, but I decided to cut that part off a bit in order to better highlight the unique steamboat architectural feature. The hotel has a nice lobby and a total of eight rooms and four different price tiers. You have the simple red ones downstairs, the blue ones in the tan second floor with ensuite bathrooms, the green ones in the steamboat with great balconies, and the luxury penthouse with the best views up top. Initially, I was kind of intimidated to tackle this building, but I'm glad I was able to figure out a design that worked well. I know it's not an exact replica, but that's fine because I think it turned out awesome and it's gonna be an amazing addition to the town. Thanks for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time in Fredericksburg.